Hi everybody, welcome to the Rambling Toffees uh, podcast. This is a new one for this week, the 26th of June. Um, well, it was a very eventful Friday. I did do a special podcast for that one uh, regarding the announcements from the board. Uh, my views at that point in time, it was quite um, an interesting day. Um, it did help the battle, well... My day was actually, I was travelling down to London later on that day for the weekend. Uh, so it, I was trying to get all that information in. Um, so it was very short and sweet um, and hopefully to a point if anybody did listen in. Um, so today I've given the weekend um, just to think about, you know, what the announcement on Friday with the new board members, the transitional interim board, um, but also... Um, I wanted to talk about the uh, MSP investment, which is a positive um, news that came before these announcements came in. Um, so I want to start off with a positive, uh, which is the MSP investment and the amount of money that's going to come into the club. Now, if that, that money, I'm guessing uh, from uh, from other, all the articles and all the news that's been coming out there, it's regarding going into the stadium so the 130 million pound which has been invested through 13 investors which msp will actually um, manage on their behalf which is quite a lot of investors i just i'm a bit uh, perplexed by the fact it's uh, the number 13 which is a bad look for, for for quite a lot of people um so that's a positive we'll see what happens with that and it's great that we're going to get new people on board um uh, with the new board when when that will be announced at some point in the future um from msp so we'll see who they may be watch this space so on a one positive sense that at least we're going in the right direction there at least that somebody uh, coming in it's going to be made official it's only on documentation at the moment uh we need more clarification as you we will guess what uh, the invest what the what the MSP want to do and how they want to take it forward and how it's going to help Everton Football Club in the future. Um, as I, the podcast previously was, um, as I guess, very short. Um, my view, thinking more about the interim appointments, are very uh, lukewarm. Um, because, and to be honest with you, I think I like everybody out there who got that news, I was disappointed by the appointments being made, especially Bill Kenwright coming back in, because the feeling I have is that he was part of a failed board. And I don't care what experience he has or what uh, expertise he has, just because he's been at a football club for such a long time, just because he was an owner beforehand, just because this, that and the other. He was part of a failure of a board that's had loss after loss after loss over the last uh, three years and four years and our transfer spend has been reduced reduced more and more and more and basically players that we have who did have asset to them were sold just so we can keep in line with um, sustainability and uh, financial status sorry i can't get the words out uh sustainability uh with the Premier League and basically we are now in a situation where again players are leaving we don't know what money we have that we need to strengthen the football club again as I talked in my previous podcasts about engagement and communication I've not heard anything from Kevin Felwell about what the plans of the future are, what what money does he have, what, what can he actually do? There's supposed to be, I think this week, I believe, um, he's supposed to be doing an interview with the club to clarify, to talk about what his plans are, not just for the first team, but also for the academy, bringing players through. The whole thing that he was supposed to be an interview this week. Obviously, maybe because of this transitional period, maybe that's been pulled back because of it. I don't know. But I am getting more and more pig sick and frustrated 
about the fact that I have to get little bits of stories from the media. I'd rather hear it from the horse's mouth. The person out there who is the director of football in name to talk to the fan base and say, this is what we all want. We are fans of the football team. We want to see our team play well. We want to see our team doing well on the football field. We want to see a strong team, a competitive team. We want to have that team. But our team, at the moment, bit by bit, players are leaving. Contracts are being offered. Some players that are coming back will not play for the club, like Deli Alley, as an example. Do you give him another chance? You give him another chance, we have to spend ten, give £10 million pounds to Tottenham if he plays another seven more games. It's things like this. But there's no clarity. And again, I go back to the engagement. I don't like the niceties of uh, Twitter, uh, Everton Twitter or the YouTube channel, which just gives players to, uh, doing quizzes on what their favourite movie is or whatever else like that. It's all nicey-nicey stuff. I don't want to know about that now at the moment. I want to know where my club going. I'm sorry I'm getting angry, but I, where is my club going? Where is what? Where's the future? We're going into a new stadium. Or, you know, wh where are we going to get to it? How are we going to get there? That's It's very simple, isn't it? But oh, what are we going to do? Are we going to wait until Sean Dice comes back into, uh, you know, you know, training? And then he, he will he will chat with somebody from the media. Oh, yeah, well, this is what we did. We're going to get... Did, did, did. Why is it always on the manager? The manager is managing the football team. But also, it would be helpful is the person who is creating, you know, making the academy supposedly better to get more... get players through for what they're doing. How do... What are they doing about it? Are they looking at free... The free market, are they looking at bringing people in, players in that way? What is it? I can ramble on about this, but it just frustrates me. I pay my money as a season ticket holder, year in, year out, to go watch my team play. And I kind of should have some sort of clarity or understanding of what is the plan going forward anyway in my next episode i will talk more about the, the team and where i where we think I, we need strengthening and i'm guessing strengthening throughout the whole team um and we need to be more competitive we don't i do not want to be in that situation again because it didn't do well for my heart at all it was not great it it was frustrating, it was anger, all these emotions. I don't want to have all these emotions. When we lose a football match, if we've lost a football match and we at least play well, I, I won't be as dis I won't be disappointed with the result, but I won't be angry at the team. I'll just say, well, at least we put a shift in and tried. You know, I t that's it's simple. Football can be so damn simple, but Everton Football Club make it so bloody complicated. So I think all I'll say now, and simple as this, is that from Friday, you know, announced about the transitional board, the interim board coming in, and me feeling that one, you've got Sir Bill Kenwright of London, doesn't, it feels like he doesn't even live in Liverpool, and basically he still stays in a role. Nobody wants him at the foot, fans demonstrated and protested against his running or as being chairman of the football club not just for the last seven years for the duration of his period as owner and the failed attempt failed things that have happened king's dock stadium failed investment from other groups i can go on kirby god oh, remember that being a season ticket or being asked to, would i want to go to Kirby and having the opportunity, I said no, of course. But basically, all these failings that happen under his watch, I didn't go on. I will leave it to the people who, at that period of time, 
who protested at that period of time in 2012 and back it, back then and before that, it it's amazing how he has stayed in that in a role and how he stayed in that role. The resignations from the other board members were the right decisions. And we're now in a situation where you bring the interim people in who have never done that role before. So as long as I keep the CEO being Colin Chong and the great work he is doing, and I will say this is a great work he's done for the stadium and being part of that, but he's never been a CEO. But he's been given that role in this transitional period while a new board is created. So, while that got, and then you bring in Mashiri comes on board, which he never does, and is in his accomplished, sorry, accomplished um, Spellman, I can't remember what his first name is, who I've never heard of before. Oh, I know he's an Evertonian, he's a chartered accountant. What's he going to do? Is he going to sit on the board while Mashiri's still stuck in Monaco? <coughs> sorry. Um, I give up. So, my feeling is this, at this precise moment, it's an intern and it's transitional. That's the only positive I'm taking, is that those, they will only be here for a short period of time and they'll be gone. I have no issue with Colin Chong and at the start of the season, if he sits in the director's box, I'm happy with that. No issue with him. Yeah, I have no problem with him. He's part of an interim, he's part of a transitional period. He may not even get to that, get to the start of the season, I don't know. With the new finance guy, same scenario. Well, no issue with him. This Mr Spellman guy, no issue with him. My issue is with Mashiri, and my issue is with Phil Kenwright. Mashiri doesn't come to the game anyway, so, well, no matter for him. Phil Kenwright still has no... He's not wanted at the football. He's not wanted by the fans and to be in that stadium. I may get criticism here by saying, well, well, you want him to come and face up to the facts and everything else. But he should have been part of the resignation. That, that resignation matter. He should have gone. Yeah? He should have gone when the rest of them did. He is there transitionally. And if it's about shares as well and how much he wants for his shares and whatever, I don't know. But he's not part, he's, he's only there, I hope, for the shortest period ever. And hopefully he's gone. Hopefully we'll get the right people in through MSP when they come in and bring their people on. And they will make the appointments. They feel fit and right to take this football club in the right direction. It will take time because of the losses we made financially and everything like that. It's going to take a while before we start to see some positivity in the future. So we may have to go through a lot of pain. But what I'm really positive about and trying to be positive and seeing that right at the end of the tunnel is seeing people coming in from outside, externally, outside Everton Football Club who have not been part of football business, big businesses, coming in with great ideas and views and actually having a bigger board than it currently is. Going in with ideas and ways, getting the best commercial deals that possibly can for Everton, getting the best commercial deals, sponsorship deals, not just for the football team and the football club itself, but also for the stadium as well, with naming rights and everything else. Getting positive, and if we start seeing good positive feedback through, and I go back that wonderful engagement and communication, and getting it out there and saying, "Look, we're doing all these wonderful things. We're, we're doing all these things to get this club back to where it should belong, being the, one of the best in 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 the UK, in England." And and you may think to say, "Oh, listen to that," and think to yourself. You'll never get to be the best where Man City are, where we might take years. 
if I can get to there and we have a good enough team, why not? Why can't I be optimistic enough and want my club, my team to be at the best, the best team in England? Playing for trophies, playing in Europe, all these wonderful things that for what Everton means and what Everton is in its history should be going for. On the low, on the, on the badge at the bottom, Neil Satis needs to Oxford. Nothing but the best is good enough. That is the mantra. That is what we follow as fans. On the pitch, we've not seen that for years. That mantra needs to be reinforced back in its the players, the management, the direct football, the board, anybody, investors, you name it, anybody, should be its mantra. And that is what you go for. If you are not good enough for this football club, you do not you should not be here. You should be gone. You should not be part of the football club. So when I go back to Bill Ken, right, and the people who resign, <coughs> they are not good enough for this football club because they don't follow the mantra of what it is. They've allowed it to fail and allowed it to go downwards and downwards and downwards to a point that we would, I don't know how many minutes it was, 20 minutes, half an hour from being relegated. And on the last day of the season, that's how close it was. And it's got to stop again. I apologise for train going past. Um, got to stop. The philosophy is this. Forget about the people who are currently there. They're just doing their jobs, right? They're just keeping it ticking over. But MSP, when they come in, and normally Americans, whoever own the uh, teams like MSP, they own the, um, I forgot what the basketball, uh, basketball team is, uh, name, name they are, and they, you know, they invest in McLaren and other things like that, is that they will want Everton Football Club to be the best. That'll be their attitude walking into the stadium. Into the new stadium, walking into the boardroom, walking, talking about them. Their mantra is, we want to be the best and we're going to get there. But it's going to take a while to get there. But if they can put the communication, as I say about communication, out there and saying, this, this is what we are going to do. And we're going to take you on this journey and we're going to make sure that you know what's going on. That's my take, and that's what my feeling is. So, for my future, for my next podcast, it will be more about the team and more about where we need to strengthen, uh, what Sean Dyche can do. Hopefully, the director of football communicate at some point. Uh, as per usual, I've not heard anything. Get a direction of some pathway uh, to the start of the season because it's not that far away. Um, on that note, thank you for again for listening to my podcast. Um, it's been fantastic to do to allow myself to express myself the way that I am, um, and I do appreciate you guys listening. Give give me any kind of feedback um, would be absolutely helpful to me um, to grow. I just want to grow the channel. So when you go into Spotify, uh, just keep subscribing. Um, and keep on getting it up for me, getting growing my channel. It will take time. But I do appreciate the people who have listened and give me their feedback. Um, I'm hopeful soon to be able to get it onto other channels like Apple and Amazon, but that's just going to take a bit longer than advertised. Um, but I will keep everybody posted. And on that note, this is the Rambling Toffee signing off, and I'll speak to you again next week. Bye.